Most people in the world have the right to choose their clothing, choose their fashion style, choose their hairstyle, choose their beard style, choose how much body hair they will or will not have on their bodies. But we live in a mighty society that likes to take power from other people. We have a bunch of people who have grown up poorly through childhood. Those people who are adults that like to taint clothing, paint clothing, cut people's clothes without consent, without allow allowing them to say no, are the type of people that are hell-bent on ruining our society. You see, a player likes to play games and try to get away with it, but many of our positions are ruined by people who like to play a game because they fail to recognize that at that moment of time, they're representing their corporation's dime. You see, a corporation pays your salary, and a corporation has a way in which they expect you to represent yourself in today's society. At the same time, that corporation usually has a code of ethics of what they expect their employees to do and not do, like, please don't pester our customers in the way that you approach them to see if they need anything else, and please don't lie to our customers about the products that we do and don't carry and when they're coming in, and please don't interfere with someone's technology on our Wi-Fi because we handle that. Our corporate office can see things. And please don't interfere with people's lives because we have no clue where they're headed today and what they're going to do with what they buy from us. But in life, we have to be very clear about our lawful rights. Our individual lawful rights says, I have the right to work here because I have chosen it and my company has chosen me. But the minute that I choose away from my company's policies and I choose selfishly for me to act inappropriately, act emotionally, act psychologically or act outside of the training I've received from my company, I put my entire life at liability to the corporation that brings my food to life. You see, a salary is something we need to do what? To pay for food and shelter in our life, the sustenance that we put in our bodies and the coverage that we use to keep ourselves out of the heat, out of the snow, out of the sun, out of the rain out of the wind, out of the storms, and openly, on another level, out of the storms of life. Now when I talk like this, it's common sense. There is nothing fanciful about my words. There is nothing unique, necessarily, about what I'm saying. But here's what I've seen in the time of COVID. That people are not caring for themselves is not true. That they are selfishly caring for themselves is absolutely acceptable and right to a point. But when people start to take away people's masks, like I've had several of my masks that I claimed that I had planned to wash and keep for my family of four or ten or more, they went missing from my bags and my pockets. My black mask that I received from a particular space was completely stolen and a different mask was put in its place. And I'm wondering why someone would do that. Because my mask had no uh, seams down the center near the nose, but the one that I got back did. I also had a mask that was stolen on campus, a little paltry thing that I got from, meaning it's not really fancy fabric, that I got from the people who deliver the hand sanitation stuff in a wagon around campus. That one went missing for a long time, and presto changeo, now it's almost back. I had other masks with the letter I on it for the university those went missing. I had a navy uh, mask for a time and it went missing. I had a green or army green mask that I picked up and planned to wash because God had said that one's clean, but let's just wash it because you know it's been raining a lot and it's gone missing. And what players in games like to do is actually play in front of you in their nanny nanny boo boo walk to say, gosh, did you know it was me who was cutting your hair? Or gosh, did you know it was me who just shaved your head? Or, gosh, did you know it was me that did all this without your consent? Or, gosh, did you know that I'm the one who stole that right off your cart? Or, gosh, did you know I'm the one that tainted that underwear? And, gosh, did you know that I readjusted that compression vest so that it would suffocate you around your stomach but make tons of room around your chest, which is a total opposite reason in which you have it in the first place? 
because what it's trying to do is hold your heart in space in the right in the proper place but people do that i even threw one away and i'm founding it back on me and that's okay but i don't need someone telling me what i can and can't do with my body you do not want someone telling you who you can and can't do with your body and when we talk like this we're speaking absolutely frank that people have the right to mightily fall in love but sometimes a predator will pounce when you're least expecting it or when you fail to do something God tells you to. I have seen many people have the greatest intentions, but they won't listen to God on how to make an approach, how to do things, and they try to do it on their own brain. And what they end up doing is monkeying it up. Because life changes. People's eyesight begin to fail about the age of 50. Most of us have to get some form of reading glasses. Some of us could be legally blind without her glasses, like a late sibling of mine. But the point is, she still somehow, through her eyes, which I cannot see through, recognized me through her glasses. Now, whether she could actually see me 100% the way that I am, I'm really curious about that. Because do glasses actually correct so that people see it clearly? But what I know about the magic of the Lord is that God did a lot of disfiguration in the Bible. What I know about the magic of the spiritual houses that represent God around the world is that they do not talk about the old ways of God. Everybody's trying to create that hip sermon, that loving sermon, that thing that makes people think and prepare for the seasons of change. The seasons of life always have changing ways. The seasons of your life is how you age. Whether you age gracefully as a gentleman or gracefully as a lady, that's pretty much up to you and the way society perceives you. But if you're playing a copycat game, if you're doing something paltry like always trying to walk out on someone walking through in a form of gaslighting, where you're adding your little fucking faggot opinions to someone's life by using litigation abuse, meaning you're doing nothing correctly, you're lying in what you're saying, and you're causing someone a legal record that's not your right to do. A policeman may try to solicit you for it, but you have to realize the minute you say yes to that lie, you literally lose your own rights. When you call a police officer because you're too immature and too immoral to handle a situation on your own, that is foolery. Because what we know about technology today is it's pocket, it's minutes. So something you thought you said to someone might not have ever gotten through to them. And something you're trying to say to someone might not get through if the person doesn't understand you at all. A lot of people make the comment of, I don't understand why you're doing this. And you're like, is that a question? Am I supposed to give you an answer? Or are you just telling me how you feel? You see, how you feel isn't how I feel. And how you emote isn't how I emote. And how you think through a problem isn't how I solve them. But openly, what I've often said is one problem at a time. But what I know about people who like to hurt people is they won't allow that person to get through that problem. They just keep adding more and more problems onto a total stranger or a sibling or a mother or a father just to be a problem for them. You see, a player does that. A player steals from someone and says, Did you know that it's missing now? A player doesn't recognize that God will take a person through a journey to remind them of, Look, I want you to see now what's not there. You see, Jesus didn't ask you to steal from anyone. Jesus didn't ask you to train anyone like a monkey so that you can have them anytime you want. Jesus doesn't do that. But what Jesus does say to people of God is, Please don't give up on love. Please don't give up on that one, baby. Please don't give up because we are not pleased with who they've picked. And at some point they're going to figure out what is and isn't rich. What is rich is the house of the Lord. What is poor may not be poor to God. So what I want you to think about is your opinions may be totally in opposite of what the Lord God above wants you to be doing. 